Well, I'm here at the park with a nice, clean, new pallet. I've um, put a plexi covering over my wood, and that way I can remove it and put new paint on, which I did. Now, I have a lot of colors here that um, could really be a, a lot of jump, jumping color if I use them purely. And so what I'd like to do is show you a limited uh, color palette mixed here and then on the board. And there's a variety of ways to mix a limited palette. And why would we want to do that? Um, because practice color mixing, for instance, with a, a, a yellow and uh, any type of blue. So let's look at, um, we'll do an ultramarine blue here and light ochre and alizarin crimson, which is our typical colors primary for sort of a natural landscapes. So you can see right away you get a deep purple and I start right away with alizarin and ultramarine. And what if I wanted to lighten that up? Well, I just add a little more red all the way along and a little white now makes it opaque. So if I wanted a transparent purple, that's where I would use a, a different uh, pigments, um, maybe a little bit more of a phthalo blue with this alizarin. So I'll use two blues here to show you. So here's the alizarin. So I've mixed a uh, alizarin and ultramarine blue, and then I mixed a phthalo and ultramarine. You can see it's, it's a little more transparent and I'll show you um, that if you mix it with a bit of white, you get an opaque. And so the opaque purple um, could cover quickly the base of some of this background. And I can thin the paint and make it lighter. If, with a white board, you can have a light background and I'm just using little repetitive strokes up and down to get a texture. And now if I wanted a green, a nice bright green would be to mix it with the phthalo blue. So that's a little brighter than if I mix it with the ultramarine. So let's put this green in. This is in the background here. leaving little light areas for the bush. So if I wanted a deeper green, I'd go with the ultramarine. And I was using this yellow. Let's move this light o ochre over. And it's nice to Im impose this pure color against some of this mixed color. And what I'm doing here is just getting some of that brightness coming through the piece and joining areas and letting the mix on the board. So now I have a nice muted tone because I'm using this limited palette. I will now add the green and get um, a more muted green now again because it's got a few different colors on that brush carry that through and this is all very thin so some of it's looking lighter uh, I have a bit of medium with it so it's just a little dry transparent like that and this is where you can wipe away a little bit you know I could put this bench in get some of that texture in there And then I can come back with that dark green again, which was the blue and the ochre together. And I can push it through and negative paint around the bench there. Okay. Push that with some dark. So if I want to 
bring this bench out, I'm going to put some real dark against it. See that? And then you can get good play on that. And I think there is a tree back here, so I'll get those guys in. And let's add uh, a warm front here. Little grasses that are more opaque. So I'm switching over to a, an ochre that's uh, regular ochre. And, and that's a nice color to use as a warm without mixing white. So this is more or less transparent and I'm just going to fill in um, the whole background with a transparent purple. And here we go. And you can tone the canvas initially this way. Red in there, that's all right. And I'm just toning it first so that it preps for the, the opaque paint on top. So this is all limited in in its uh, color mixing and in in its application right now. It's a good way to underpaint a painting. Now the color dominance is is cool. because I'm applying a cool purple blue. There's other considerations that I will think about when I'm out here and abstracting the work. With abstracts, I believe considerations such as the use of line, shape repetitions, or themes, um, perhaps use some new forms and uh, think about color dominance. There will be still should be value transitions and even including sort of a no tan structure to some degree. I mean, these all come into play, spacing and textural elements. And they all become more important than the subject. And so how the viewer is led through the painting while establishing some like emotional response is really the key that I'm after. So also in abstraction or plein air painting even, uh, a la prima painting, Carrying the paint across like that can be a, a good way to quickly unify the painting. And then just take that same color and add little highlights and bring the focal point over to where you'd like the viewer to go. The bench is somewhat placed in the middle, but that can be a stabilizing aspect of a painting by grounding something there. And then bringing my eye over here and maybe with a figure walking by uh, with their dog uh, my dog Leka loves this dog park. So sometimes I like to bring heightened color against areas to there's little stops along the way. Just like when you take a walk, uh, there are stops to contemplate and think about. And so it's not so much a matter of copying everything that I see out here, but the, ex the experience of walking through it, the park and walking through a painting and hoping that it gives gives a sense of um, excitement in some areas where uh, you come across a color surprise and then uh, in others uh, where they're they soften out and and are more uh, deep and muted and restful and somewhere to rest your eye and that can be done with color as well as value and space, uh, for instance, taking a, a light color and uh, maybe bring some more opaques in here, cutting out 
this is unusual color but I kind of like to play on that right around this uh, figure carry it through a bit in the painting and then uh, stand back have a look and hope that's been a little playful expression of the day <laughs>